If you're new to Xactimate, or even if you've been using it for a little while, you're going to find today's video pretty useful. I'm gonna go through what's called the dashboard in Xactimate, and sometimes some things can go missing and it can be confusing to navigate, so super excited to share this information with you today. However, I do wanna tell you we're having a upcoming Xactimate 101 challenge, and you'll find the link to that information down below this video. Basically a five day challenge where I'll take you from writing your first estimate all the way to importing roof measurements, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. It's gonna be next week, October 14th through the 18th, and uh, we're super excited to run that. So information down below in the link, but for this video, let's go take a look at the dashboard in Xactimate, and let me show you where some things can get hidden. <music> First of all, we're gonna start off, we've already logged into Xactimate here, and I'm showing you what's called the desktop version. So I can tell it's the desktop version of Xactimate because it's locally installed here on my PC. The online version, you'd have to access through a browser, and I'll get there later on in this video. So for the desktop version of Xactimate, you are actually working on the PC, so I don't have to be connected to the internet the whole time. I do have to be connected in order to download live price list, but after that, I can close my laptop, go out in the field, and do what I need to do um, out there. I love taking Xactimate with me out in the field because then I can enter measurements and you know document things rather than having to document everything and then bring it back to the office. So that's why I like it locally installed. However, if you like to log in uh, at this, you know, your your home office, and then maybe go uh, log in at the work office, and you have that flexibility, or you need that flexibility, then the online version might be a better fit for you. I will say that the desktop version is much faster, which is why I prefer it, because it's all locally on my computer, all the data is. If you're on the online version, it has to go out and collect the data, and then come back, and yeah, it's just a little bit slower process depending on your internet speed, and uh, whether you have connection to internet will all be, you'll be dependent on that if you're using the online version. So that's one of the reasons I prefer the desktop version. So getting into the dashboard on the desktop version, when you first open Xactimate, they call this the dashboard. And it usually opens to what's called your local screen, and this will be your locally uh, sourced products, meaning that these projects you see on my screen are actually open here on my PC. So let's say that I wanted to go to the online version. That's gonna be your cloud. Okay, so follow me on this. this is where a lot of people get a little hung up because it's like, what's the difference between local and cloud? Well, in my all projects on the cloud, I can see a whole history of everything I've ever done. So the reason I mention this is when you go to local, this is what resides on the PC. Let's say that I have the professional version of Xactimate, which means that you have desktop, online, and mobile all the projects are accessible through those three different versions, but you've got to load them to the cloud before the online version can see it. Otherwise, it's just existing locally on my desktop. If I want to pull something into mo mobile as well, it has to be in the cloud, uh, not here uh, existing locally. And so that is the difference between the two is you can't access or edit what's sitting locally on your PC in the desktop version, if that makes sense. I would need to send it up to the cloud and then I can pull it into some other version once it's in the cloud area. So let me show you how this would work. So here in the local version, let's say I wanna send my macro uh, test project up to the cloud. I would then highlight that macro project and then you've got a myriad of options that aren't visible unless you have the project selected. So first thing you can do, you can do a project preview. You can see what the name is. You can even edit the name if you need to ever, ever do that. Edit the actual name of the project, not what's listed on the project when you open it, but actually the project name here um, compared to you know the, the, the file name or something like that. This will be the whole project as a whole. You can actually edit it there. Duplicate is useful to avoid duplicate data entry. You can actually sketch um, you know, a whole floor plan, add all your estimate items maybe for mitigation, and then you can duplicate and write a restoration estimate but not have to re-sketch or maybe need to save you know, some of those details uh, without having to duplicate your data entry. You can just duplicate the project, so that's really useful. Print's pretty self-explanatory. Print notes, I never use those, but send to cloud. This is what I'm after right here. So if I send this project to the cloud, it'll then connect, as you can see, but remove it from my local. I now no longer have the macros project, as you can see here. 
on my um, local projects, it will ask me if I want to search the cloud projects and then it will take me over here to the cloud and we can search there and then I can search and find that what I was working on before. So that is what the cloud and difference between the cloud and the local. The same thing with the mobile. You would just open up the mobile. Everything would have to be in the cloud for you to pull it down to your mobile device, such as an iPad, and then you can get to work on it. So same thing. Now that I'm in the cloud and in the all projects section, I do need to go ahead and download it again in order to start working on it. You could probably just double click on it. I think that'll send it to local as well. But just so you get the concept, that's what that's doing there couple other things I wanted to note on the sidebar really quick. You can request data or order Eagle View measurements. Some of the other less prominent roof measurement reports can um, be requested, I believe. I'm not going to say any names, but there's some people up and coming that you can request the data very soon. Um, Eagle View is the main source right now, and I have a whole video on how to do that. Search on our YouTube channel, how to import Eagle View roof measurements, and you can watch that. I'm not going to go over that here. Um, you can also edit, which just opens the estimate, nothing fancy. And then um, lastly, you can go ahead and restore a previous version. If you've made a huge mistake or something went wonky, maybe Xactimate crashed, you can go back and restore a previous version without the glitch that you're experiencing, which is very um, useful. And the rest of these, I don't really use the create rebuild. Um, and then if you need to delete, you can. So that's kind of the hidden menu that a lot of people don't know um, exists or you're just used to coming in here and double clicking on it and opening it, you may not know that this little side menu exists. So going back to the cloud and all projects, nothing really is rocket science here. You can see that I have the macros uh, project checked out onto my local, so I will not be able to access it on my online version of Xactimate. So if I leave my office, log into Xactimate online, it would be considered checked out and not being able to be edited. So if it is something that you're gonna work on later on in the cloud version or online version, you do wanna be sure to send up that project back to the cloud and then you can view it on a mobile device in the online version and all of that. So just to wrap up that thought. Some of the other things that you can do here, um, again, you can restore a previous version and you can duplicate, but not as many options as you have on the local version. Then we're gonna get into preferences. Preferences is really fun. This is where you can set up some defaults that Xactimate can have um, ready for you so that you don't have to keep doing the same type of data entry over and over and over. So I don't really find anything that useful in the general section of the preferences. So you've got just some basic stuff here. Um, if you really are having some trouble sending reports or PDFs with lots of photos, sometimes the double compression can help. Um, you get those pro projects sent up to the insurance company or submitted um, because it will just make it so that those those images are lower, a little bit lower quality, but doesn't create such a large PDF. Um, other than that, everything else is pretty standard, nothing to change there. Next, we'll move on to projects. And what I like here is this is where you can really set up some nice time-saving defaults. So you'll see I'm set up here as the claim rep. Uh, in every single estimate I open going forward, it will set me up, it will already enter me as the claim rep, and it will already en enter my company header, meaning my company will already be set up in Xactimate with an opening statement that I've pre-populated. So that's big time-saving device there. I don't have to go in and set up these fields. They are preset going forward. They will be added to every single estimate. The other thing that uh, can be useful here is if you're working a large storm and you want every single date of loss to be that storm date, just be careful that you change it because when you set the date of loss here, it's going to be every single estimate that you open in, you know, going forward. So that could be useful though if you're working a large storm in one area and you're just tired of entering that same date of loss, um, that can be useful. Same with type of loss um, as well. And then this is a big one, resequence line numbers. So I notoriously forget to make sure that my line item numbers, and I'll give you an example really quick. I make sure that uh, I add all my estimate items, you know, in the estimate item screen, all my line items are there, but I will, as a human being, forget to resequence those line items almost every single time. So I'll show you that default in just one second. But let's add another, uh, let's say we're going to clean the room, okay? So we add clean, shoot, I've forgotten the code for that. It's already in there anyway. So let's say we're gonna go ahead and, I don't know, paint the baseboard. That's fine. 
um, but you'll see that it added a line item number seven. There's several different reasons for that. Um, I don't need to go into that in this video, but if I print my report, it doesn't look as professional if all of my line item numbers are out of order. I just, it makes me feel like I'm not providing a good work product. So what you normally have to do is go over to documents and then reports here and it wouldn't ask you this question. So what I'm gonna show you in the dashboard reminds me every single time I add a line item and it's out of order, this window pops up. Do you want to resequence? Why, yes I do. Thank you, Xactimate, for reminding me. And now when we look at those estimate items, they're in numerical order and they're not all wonky donkey all over the place. So to set that up, that is in your preferences and that's in the project preferences. We can scroll down here to the very bottom, so I've already scrolled down. It's this setting right here. Resequence line numbers prompt on complete or prompt on print. I prefer prompt on print because most contractors are not completing, you're not putting your estimates in the complete status. That's an exact analysis thing. That's something that maybe if you're in contractor connection or Code Blue or Lions Bridge, you might do that. Most contractors do not, but you are printing out of Xactimate. You're usually printing to a PDF, so that will cover all bases and you will have that box pop up. Super valuable in my opinion. Next, under pricing, I don't really ever schedule a default price list. Um, I want it to keep updated. There's reasons for adjusters doing this. Again, if you're working a big storm and you wanna stop having to fill out the price list on every single estimate going forward, maybe it's useful, but most cases not really um, so. Um, you can also do property or zip code po post matching, um, postcode matching here, meaning that whenever you fill out the um, claim info screen, it'll grab that uh, zip code and pull down the price list for you. Again, not that useful. I like to be a little bit more controlling on my price list and what I'm doing. So I like to manually do that part. Um, you can also set, you know, different defaults for depreciation, um, but I do over always add the 10 and 10 for overhead and profit. Perhaps it's 20 and 20 in your area, um, just depending on what you need. So that is a default. It's never zero. I ask for on every single estimate. I don't care which insurance company it is. If I don't ask for it, they can't say yes. So it goes on every estimate and this is where you can set that. So you don't have to, you can set it once and forget it is what I like to say. Payment tracker, all of this is really more adjuster settings, additional charges, same. Perhaps you have labor unions in your area. Some of this might apply under pricing, but pretty much what I find to be most useful is adding that 10 and 10. With sketch, if you're doing a lot of interior sketch, this can save you quite a bit of time. I'm not gonna read through all of these, but basically um, you can you know, set a larger font if you're having trouble reading the font on the screen for your measurements. Whenever I was teaching classes live, a lot of people would have these tiny little fonts and we couldn't see those measurements. And this is where we go to turn that up so that you can actually see what you're doing. So there's some, uh, there are some useful things in here. Um, placement, this just has to do with, you know, what do you want your default windows, width and height, the door width, perhaps you're working on ADA compliant buildings and you're never gonna have a two foot six door, it's always gonna be three foot, three foot six, whatever you're working with, you can set those defaults here. Again, this is very nuanced stuff that most people don't really wanna change. What's set here is for most residential houses. And so maybe if you're working commercial or something like that, you might wanna change, but most of this stuff pretty much applies across the board for most contractors. And then calculations, this really gets into some of the waste factors and things with the carpet, carpet and vinyl flooring. I would leave these alone unless you know exactly what you're doing and have a good intent on doing it. Um, most of these are, are pretty um, you know, useful the way that they're set. The only thing I would mention is that your wall openings, you might wanna change some of these. So perhaps if you want, if you set a door in sketch and it's larger than 30 square feet, you want to deduct that from your paint. But if it's less than 30 square feet, you want it included in what's basically, you know, part of the wall square footage. Um, that's probably, you know, something that maybe a carrier might require. Again, this is going to blanket all estimates. So I don't prefer to set that here unless you know, like you're on code blue or one of those other um, contractor referral networks you might have to set that there for them. But uh, that's pretty much the overview of, of the sketch uh, section. I would ask you to, you know, if you're sketching a lot of interior sketch, this would be some useful stuff you wanna take a look at. Next, we have the third party stuff. This all has to do with if you're a vendor, if you're on a referral program, and they would instruct you how to set this up. So probably doesn't apply to most of us. And uh, so not much to talk about here. There is one thing that I did forget to mention at the very beginning of looking at your preferences. These profile settings are per profile. 
So I have some different profiles loaded here. I would have to set this up per profile. Most of you have only contractor or carrier. So if you want to make sure that you never have to reset these up again, I would set them up for both carrier and contractor. Um, I only have them set up for carrier because that's the only profile that I use to write estimates. But if you're in danger of possibly needing the you know, contractor uh, profile for whatever reason, I would just set them up in both and it's one and done and you don't have to look back. So once you set them up, it pretty much will roll them out going forward. There are some times that the updates for some reason, or perhaps something just happens on my PC where these get reset back to the default. And I do have to go in from time to time, make sure that I have like my resequent line, line numbers, you know, checked off here. Um, so, and in fact, right, right there, it did something funny. <laughs> I want to prompt on print. Um, so just double check. Oh, I know why it was different y'all. It's because I changed the profile. If I go back to my carrier, it is still the way I set it up. So that's, that can throw you just be, be careful what you're doing in which profile and uh, you should be golden. And then it should roll out moving forward. You'll have all these defaults settings all set up, ready to go. Lastly, we've got our tools here. This is how you can data transfer. You can data transfer a lot of things. I'm not going to go into that in this video, but this is where you find where you can send out ESX. It's one of the places you can send out um, your estimate to maybe an adjuster who's like, yeah, if you just send your ESX over, I'm totally going to pay out your estimate. That's fine. Just know that if you send an ESX report and not a PDF, they can edit it. So I take it with a grain of salt when an adjuster wants my ESX because I don't want him just delete. I just did all this work for him, right? He'll just delete off when he's not going to pay anyway. Ways, and then he's just going to write that check. It's like, no, actually, we need to have more of a discussion, Mr. Adjuster. So only in a very few instances will I share the ESX file. This is where you can do it, though. Share with a colleague or um, perhaps you need to send it to somebody. You can also import ESXs here from someone who's like, hey, I sketched a geodesic dome. It's like, yeah, I want to see that roof. You can then import the project here. Um, you can also export and import a lot of different data sets like macros, note templates, um, a lot of fun things that can be sent and exported, uh, sent and received using the data transfer feature. Um, some of the other things with the tools aren't that useful. I don't really send or receive templates or any of the, these things. Um, the price list editor is here. Um, that's a whole other video. They've moved it away from the old price list editor to this one that's completely online. So that's a little bit harder to use, but you can create your own custom price list in Xactimate if needed. This is where you would go. And then we don't really use exact analysis and and all of that. So mostly what I use the tools for is your data transfer and sending, receiving ESX, macros, note templates, all the fun things. And then of course, the very last is help. This is very nice if you get stuck somewhere, you're having a glitch, the live help section will take you to the chat support. Uh, chat support is free and it's 24 seven. If you call them and um, use their support line, they will charge you, I believe it's $20 per instance. So um, it's, you know, not set in stone that it's like $20 per question, but they they will charge you. So the live help is free and it's available 24 seven, whereas this one's available, um, I believe like eight to six mountain time. Um, they may have changed their hours. I haven't called them in a long time because I just go to the live help. The other thing that's useful about the help screen is this about Xactimate. If you ever call sales and you need to re up your subscription or it perhaps tech supports asking you, you know, what version do you have of Xactimate? It's all here in the help under about Xactimate. Sometimes it's hard to find like your product key code. Um, it can be difficult to pull that out of your online account with Verisk. So I just go right to help and about and I can find what I need when I'm talking to sales or if tech support needs to know version numbers of what I'm running. Useful stuff is on the screen and um, yeah, that's where I like to point you to. So um, good for tech support, good for helping when they have questions about, you know, what's going on with your Xactimate, this is the spot to be. Now quickly moving into the online version, you'll see I'm logged in on my Google Chrome. Please excuse all the tabs. I'm very busy today, so I've got lots of tabs open. But um, you'll see that you are limited in what is on this ribbon over here. We only have projects and preferences. And we can open projects here if they're not checked out. So like I just illustrated with the local version, Mr. Anderson's uh, you know, estimate is checked out on my local, so I can't edit it. It would just be read only. So I'd have to call my office and say, hey, can you send my, go in my office, 
go into local, send up the Mr. Anderson file so that I can edit it here at home on the cloud. And so that's kind of a rigmarole. And that's why I like to have just a laptop loaded with the desktop version. But, you know, you do have that flexibility of going to any PC and logging in with the online version. So I get it. Um, it also is a little bit slower because it has to go pull everything from the database and all of that. But, you know, it's not a bad version to use for sure. And uh, especially if you're wanting the mobility of having to, being able to log into different computers and use Xactimate. Preferences, um, also it's just set up a little bit differently. It's just like what I rolled through with the preferences here on the local version. Um, and so there's, it just looks a little bit different. Notice that it does log you out of your local version. If you're using the online, it will kick you out so that you can't use two versions at once. So be aware of that. I would then have to go log back in to my uh, local version in order to show you that look of the preferences, but good illustration of why you want to make sure you're using the right version of Xactimate that suits your needs. So with the online version preferences, everything that I mentioned pretty much is here. Just it's organized a little bit differently than what I just demonstrated. And then of course, help, it's going to take you to their help website. It's not going to open that help version like I just showed you. So um, just a couple differences there. It's definitely pared down on, you know, your your, your options for your ribbons, um, and then your options for the project itself. You'll see you don't have, you know, duplicate and some of those other long lists that the local version did have. So those are the differences between the online and the desktop version. Of course, I prefer the desktop, but you determine which version is best for you. And just a nice little walkthrough of what the dashboard uh, includes and all of your options there. So if you liked this video, you're going to definitely like our Xactimate five day challenge that's coming up. It's the Xactimate 101 Estimate Mastery five day challenge starting October 14th. And we'll put a link in the description down below for you to go get more information on that. Would love for you to join me. So every day for the five days of the challenge, I will be showing up and just giving you the basics of Xactimate, what it takes to write a really good estimate with the goal of you ending that five day challenge with an estimate estimate written in hand. That's our goal. And show you some of the ins and outs and nuances of Xactimate that are very important for a contractor. So again, more information in the link down below. If you like this video, be sure to like it so I can create more topics like this and consider subscribing. We release videos every Tuesday and I hope you have a great week in your business and I'll see you next week.